Trick trivia time. Grab your friends and play it online. With Ali and Gina and Taco just for you. It's bigger trick trivia time. And we're feeling all right. Okay, come on, let's Welcome. Good evening. Uh, let me make sure this is working. Can you hear me over there? Uh, let me make sure yeah, okay. All right. It's working. Welcome, everybody. Good evening. It's just after nine o'clock central time on Thursday, April the 30th. The last day of April in 2020. So thank you for being here. My name is Ali with Vega Tricks Entertainment. We're going to play some trivia here in just a few. Uh, this is going to be general knowledge trivia. These questions come from anywhere and everywhere. Um, there are 30 questions total. Half of them are multiple choice. Half of them you have to supply your own answer all on your own. And we do have a gift card up for grabs tonight. So I'll give you the full rundown on how this game works in just a little bit. But right now, if this is your first time, you want to make sure if you can hear me, you can see me, you're already halfway there. You still need to join the online game, though. Make sure that you do join you can see it on the screen now, online.bigoftricks.com, and enter in the code TRICKS3, TRICKS3. So for those of you, if this is your first time, I know for a fact uh, my friend Shauna is out there, uh, and I think she brought some uh, friends or coworkers along um, virtually. So if this is your first time playing trivia, there are just two parts. There's the video that you're seeing here, and then there's the actual interactive trivia game. We do everything together but you're not gonna answer the questions on YouTube. You're just gonna hear me read them to you. And then you'll actually answer in real time, I recommend on your phone. So especially if you're hanging out at home and it's you and your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend or you and your kids or whoever, your mom and your dad, if you're all sitting around the same computer, you can just put my face up on YouTube on one computer. You can listen to me read the questions and then all of you can play individually from your phone. Um, and that's a fun way to do it. Or if you just want to team up and play together, you can just join from one computer or one phone. But I want to make sure you guys all do that now so that you're ready to go when we kick this off in a few minutes. On your phone, I recommend, or on your computer, just open a browser. You don't have to download anything. Open up a browser and go to online.bagoftricks.com. I'm pretty sure it works in any browser, Chrome, Firefox, Opera, Netscape, Internet Explorer. Uh, any older ones I'm forgetting? No, that's probably it. So just enter in that website, online.bagoftricks.com. Once you get there, it's going to ask you for the game code, and you're going to put in the code TRICKS3, T-R-I-C-K-S-3. And then it will show you, actually, let me go back, because I'll show you what it'll look like once you're there. You'll see a screen that looks like this. And it'll ask you for two pieces of information. It'll say, what's your name? My name is Ali, and what state are you playing from? Uh, I'm playing from a state of confusion. Um, so that's all you have to do is input those two things. We ask for the state that you're playing from because that helps us keep track. We're trying to uh, get to the point where we've had participants from all 50 nifty United States. We are super close. If you are out there tonight and you are playing from Wyoming or Idaho or Maine or Alaska or Missouri. No, we have Missouri. Mississippi, I don't think we have. Um, we're looking for participants from all of those states. So if you're out there playing tonight, you're from one of those states, let us know. But once you've entered those two pieces of information, it'll tell you right here, the game will begin shortly. Nothing's gonna change until I start the game on my end. So if you've done that, you are good to go. Thank you so much for being here. Before we go any further, I do wanna give out a couple special thank yous First and foremost, to everyone out there who's been supporting Bag of Tricks since we've you know, pivoted to this online trivia platform. I mentioned my friend Shauna is here tonight. Uh, she's an individual that's been playing trivia with us 
basically, since there wasn't a bag of tricks, it was just Ali hanging out at the bar, Maple Avenue Pub, hosting trivia for fun um, and beer. So thank you guys that have you know taken that ride with us and now are taking this trip with us online. We're doing the best we can to provide as many online interactive experiences for you that we can every single week. Uh, you know, last count, I think we're over 60 events that we've hosted since the lockdown started, um, and no signs of slowing down. We typically do two events a day, um, during the week and one to two events on the weekend. We just finished military history trivia night. You'll see that rotating up here, uh, in a little bit, uh, military history trivia night sponsored by the first division museum out of Cantini. Now we're doing general knowledge trivia. These questions will be about anything and everything. Um, so again, Thank you to everybody that supported us just by being a fan of Bag of Tricks, by liking our posts or just liking our Facebook page. If you haven't, facebook.com slash Bag of Tricks. That really helps us out. Commenting, sharing the posts, and inviting your family and friends to play these virtual games. So obviously, if you live in Chicagoland, it's a little bit tougher to convince your family in Maine to fly out here to play trivia. But... It's a lot easier when everybody's on lockdown to send them a quick Facebook invite and say, hey guys, we're playing trivia tonight. It's free at nine o'clock, you should join us. You can actually set up a Zoom meeting or a FaceTime and you can play with them as a team. Um, so please do spread the word, bring your friends. The more of you that join, the more fun I have, the more interaction we get in the comments. Um, before I go any further, I'm here in front of the camera. Uh, you saw Taco, if you were here. He's hanging out, sleeping on the chair. And my fiance Gina, is behind the camera on the keyboard, answering your questions, answering, uh, responding to your comments. So please give her a big thank you, a big shout out in the comments. Because if you were with us during military history trivia at 7 o'clock, I always say uh, that this game wouldn't happen if it wasn't for Gina. And I think you saw tonight uh, that it is not as smooth of a ship when she is not here. Um, I definitely struggled to do this on my own. So please, guys, show her some love in the comments. She's the one that makes this work. Um, I do want to give another big old thank you to everybody out there that has supported us beyond just online, but financially. Uh, you can see the links down below if you haven't and you would like to donate. Um, we're on Venmo, PayPal, and Zelle. Bag of Tricks as a corporation is not up and operating. This is just myself and Gina at our dining room table putting on trivia events for you. Um, so we're having a great time, but we do appreciate every single donation that you all send because that's what allows us to continue to do this going forward. These platforms that we use, the online trivia, it's not free. We do have to pay for it. So those donations uh, have been incredible. You guys have been more than generous and it's allowed us to continue to do this um, as often as we are and to offer as many different events as we are. Speaking of different types of events, one way that we're giving back Anybody that donates via any of the platforms below, anybody that donates throughout the week goes into a drawing, and each week we draw one name. If you happen to win, we will contact you, and you get to choose one of the trivia nights that we host next week. Um, so our first winner, Olivia, asked us to do the Netflix show You. Our second winner, Missy, had us do Breaking Bad trivia. And then just this week, uh, Cindy G was our winner, and she went a different route. She asked us to do a general knowledge trivia like you'll see tonight, but she gave us six specific categories that she wanted questions to come from, some that we don't usually do, like 60s and 70s music or country music, uh, nursery rhymes, some fun stuff that we added in just for her. So one of you out there will win that, and you'll get to choose a, a, a trivia night that we do next week. It can be any movie, TV show, book that you like. Uh, something we've already done. If you like Harry Potter, we just did it on Monday. But if you win, you could tell us to do it again next week. And we will for you. That's how we can easily say thank you to all of you that have donated. Um, I just saw donations come through. Um, speaking of Shauna, thank you for the donation. Uh, Marcella, uh, Lisa, thank you for the donation. So I'm going to dive into the game here in just a few minutes. But before we do, I want to tell you about the events we already have coming up. You're going to see them rotating here. This is what we're doing right now, Thursday, April 30th, 9 p.m. We're doing general knowledge trivia. The next event is the one I'm probably most excited about. Tomorrow evening at 8 p.m., Fridays with Bag of Tricks tend to be our fundraiser Fridays. And this is no different. We are doing a trivia for a cause. We're calling it Food for Thought. So it is a general knowledge trivia night. It's going to be 90 minutes long from 8 p.m. to 9.30 tomorrow night. That's the only type of event that we are that we ever charge an entrance fee for, and we don't even charge it. You buy your ticket through 
the person that we are raising funds for, which is the West Suburban Community Pantry. The West Suburban Community Pantry, I believe located right in Woodbridge. Um, we've hosted events for them in the past where we've connect, collected food donations and dropped them off. Um, with all of the lockdown going on, we realized you know, it, it's a little bit tougher to do that. So we're doing a virtual trivia fundraiser. Uh, all the tickets that are purchased, proceeds go directly to them. And they are helping people in these really tough times who maybe can't afford the food that they need um, or any type of um, situation like that. That's what these proceeds are going to help. So purchase your ticket. Make sure you get in for that. Those trivia nights are always a lot of fun. It's longer than our usual one. We do all sorts of questions. Um, and especially if you're in this area, put that money back into the community. We have already had individuals from Canada, uh, some of our favorite people from Saskatchewan, have already purchased tickets to help out with the West Suburban Community Pantry. So not even in the same country, and they are helping out however they can. So thank you to everybody that does help. We're excited for that one. It's tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Tickets are still available. And then we have two events this weekend. Saturday at 3 p.m. is SpongeBob Trivia, completely family-friendly. Bring the kids, bring the parents, whoever you want. It's trivia over every season of SpongeBob. And then on Sunday, our first ever virtual trivia brunch. We are doing Golden Girls Trivia, and we're going to spice it up. We're not just going to do trivia. Uh, Gina and I are going to be making cheesecake. We're going to have Bloody Marys and mimosas. And our sponsor, McWethy's Tavern, is going to be providing an amazing brunch that we're going to get. Um, if you are interested and you're in the area, definitely consider ordering some brunch from McWethy's Tavern. Um, they're sponsoring that to the tune of $75 for the top participants. We'll, we'll win gift cards. Um, so a lot of fun on Saturday, Sunday, but let's talk about tonight. We are about to do 30 general knowledge trivia questions, and tonight is sponsored by Elmhurst Brewing Company. Uh, they are one of my favorite local breweries. They reached out and said, we want to sponsor as many events as we can, um, and they have lived up to that. This is one of many events this week that somebody is going to win a $25 gift card. The top individual tonight wins a $25 gift card. They are open currently. You can buy delicious beer, delicious food. They do curbside carryout and limited delivery if you're in the area. So please, if you haven't yet, check them out on Facebook, online, give them a like, see what they have to offer. And if you win trivia tonight, you'll have a $25 credit applied at the bar, at the brewery, for the next time you order. So a lot of fun stuff going on. Because we're playing for a prize tonight, I feel like this goes without saying, but no cheating, no Googling, no searching for answers. Anything that you uh, answer with tonight has to come out of somebody's brain. It doesn't matter uh, if it's your brain or a teammate's brain, virtually or whatever, but just don't Google these answers. Keep it fair so we all have fun. That's it. There's been a request to see the rest of your shirt. There's been a request to see the rest of my shirt. This was a birthday Very present. Fitting for the background. Uh, a birthday present from the wonderful McLeans, Anna and Alex McLean. I think it was actually Secret Santa. Uh, so I play Dungeons and Dragons every week. At least typically I do. Um, I've been missing my D&D sessions to host trivia for you guys. Uh, so I need to get back to that. But all sorts of cats on here. Fighter, rogue, cleric, barbarian, monk, ranger, paladin, druid, wizard, warlock, bard, and sorcerer. Um, so a fun little shirt. I love cats. I love D and D. So, uh, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Alex for the shirt. And thank you for whoever asked about it. I do enjoy my geeky side. So we're going to play trivia. Uh, otherwise I'm going to babble on forever, but that's what we're here for. Not for me babbling, but for this interaction. Um, I've said it a million times. I will continue to say it. If you guys just want a quick and easy, uh, 10 question trivia game, go look it up online. There's a lot of trivia you can play virtually. You can just get a bunch of questions and get it done. Um, if you want something to make you feel more interactive, more like you're at the bar, more like you're hanging out with a group of friends, this is a place for you. Gina's answering and looking at the comments, and I do check in, but I get really sidetracked, so I try not to do it too often, but she'll let me know whenever somebody you know, asks me a question uh, so I can respond. But guys, this is not going to be a boom, 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 we're moving through these questions. We're gonna have a good time. It'll move at a good pace. But if you're not looking for me to be talking to you, uh, this is the wrong place for you. So I appreciate all of you that are with us. Talk we to me. Talk to me, baby. Um, we've made a lot of friends. We're excited that um, this phrase even exists, uh, online trivia regulars. I never thought that that would be a thing, and I'm so freaking excited that it is. Um, so before we go any further, cheers, guys. Thank you for being here. Cheers. Uh, we are going to get the game started, though. It's 9.15. That's my, my hard cutoff. Gina's behind the screen going, go, go, 
go. Not tonight. I'm chill. No, she's chill, actually. Usually she's telling me to get a move on. Uh, but thank you guys so much for being here. Thank you, Sarah, for the donation. We really appreciate all of you. So here's how the game works. If you haven't played, you should have already joined online, online.bigatrix.com. There are 30 questions total. The first 15 questions are multiple choice. And then the second set of 15 questions are open-ended, which means you actually have to supply your own answer. You'll type it in on your phone or your keyboard. Overall, the questions start out easy and they get tougher as the game goes on. Um, they should, the points should increase if I remembered to do that. Uh, let me take a look really quick. Yeah, the multiple choice questions are all going to be worth the same amount. Um, and then they'll go up as we get into the rest of the questions. But there's just a few things you need to know. If you've never played trivia with us, I'll ask the question for you over the speakers, over your computer, and then you'll actually see it pop up on your phone if that's where you're playing from. For the multiple choice questions, four, question, uh, four possible answers will pop up on your screen. All you have to do to answer is click the letter of the answer that you believe to be correct. So you'll see A, B, C, and D. If you think the correct answer is A, you click A. If you think it's B, you click B, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there are a few things you need to know though. First and foremost, these are all worth a different amount of points. I'm sorry, the multiple choice are all worth the same, but you can earn a different amount of points based on how quickly you answer. So if the correct answer is A and you click A right away, you will earn more points than someone who also answers A, but maybe took 10 seconds to answer. And I'm telling you this so that you know, you do want to strategize a little bit because you don't want to just blindly click because if you're wrong, you cannot undo your answer. If you think it's A and you click A and then you realize, shit, it's B, you can't unclick A to click B. So there's that fine line there. You want to strategically choose your answer, but you do want to get it in as quickly as possible to earn as many points as you can. That changes when we move into the second half of the night where the questions are a little different, and I'll explain that when we get there. Um, but for now, we are going to start this game. We're going to move in to the first round, the multiple choice questions. This very first question, everyone, is a practice question. So if you've never played trivia, this question will look and act just like a regular multiple choice question. The only difference is that it's not going to be worth any points. Um, and I'm doing that so that, again, if this is your very first time, you're not going to miss out if you're not sure how it works. But after this, we'll be good to go. Everything will be worth points, and we will be live. Question? You want to know what you're drinking. Want to know what I'm drinking. So do I. <laughs> oh, you have plenty over there. Um, I will show you guys here in just one second. Just finishing up one thing. I did forget to increase the points on these. So I'm doing that now. Uh, what am I drinking? I, tonight, am drinking two different things. Uh, for any of you that have been with us for a long time, you know that I enjoy my whiskey. Um, I, I, I enjoy beer. I don't drink beer a lot, but I do enjoy beer. And tonight, I have the best of both worlds. Um, so to be clear, I love Elmhurst Brewing Company, and they are our sponsor tonight. The only reason I don't have an Elmhurst Brewing Company beer that I am drinking is because we are not super close. We have not been to Elmhurst in a little while. Um, so please don't take the fact that I'm drinking a different beer to mean anything deeper than the fact that this is what's available in my fridge. So I will tell you, I have a delicious Manhattan that Gina made for me just a little bit earlier uh, with some bitters, courtesy of my friend Sheila, some craft bitters. Um, so cheers. And then I also have a delicious permanent vacation, which I think is the most aptly named beer currently um, from Brickstone out of my hometown of Bourbon A, Illinois, uh, the first brewery, the first place I ever drank at when I turned 21, Brickstone Brewing. Thank you guys. You do incredible jobs uh, or incredible work on your beer and your food. Yeah, I know. I know. We're going. We're going. I had to change the questions. All right, here we go. We're going to start this out. You're going to see the first question pop up. This is just a practice question. Question number one. You're going to hit A, B, C, or D, whichever one is correct. What is the name of your trivia host tonight? Who is me? What is my name? 
Am I Jason, Billy, Zach, or Ali? What is the name of your trivia host? Jason, Billy, Zach, or Ali? Just hit it in. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, Brenda, Kayla, Kara, Sarah, all of you for the donations. We appreciate the heck out of you. Even if you're not donating, do not feel like you have to. We still love you guys. Um, but I do like to shout those people out because we, we do appreciate that. All right, let's see how many people enjoyed my Power Rangers reference. I try to switch this up every night. This is always our practice question. Um, the correct answer here, my name is Ali, Ali Bag of Tricks. Correct answer by 106 of you. I didn't know so many people were here. Um, we have 122 people playing. So, yeah, I guess I will shore it up a little and get this moving. Uh, here we go. And the answer didn't show, just you know, make sure it's just like I'm the oh, you guys are still looking at my face, huh? Yeah. 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 There we go. Everything is fine. Uh, question number one. Now you know how this works. If this is your first time, again, Shauna and friends, thank you for being here. Everyone else, thank you for being here. I haven't looked at the comments, and I'm not going to right now because I will be stuck there for 10 minutes because I love talking to you guys. All right, here we go. Question number two. This is the first real question. We're going to kick it off with alcohol. Which alcoholic spirit, what type of alcohol is used to make a traditional pina colada? Do you make a pina colada with gin, vodka, rum, or tequila? How about a pina colada? I would love, I don't really want to make one right now. <laughs> you just take a white claw and pour some pineapple juice in? Yeah. No? I want a Tommy Widener drink. Yes, I do. Wait. Oh, Jeff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeff has a Tommy Widener. Uh, you weren't here earlier, but Tommy was drinking a um, trademark Burt Wilkinson highball. Oh, nice. That's cute. Wait. Maggie picked her favorite Hanson brother. Who is it? Uh, I'm going to guess Taylor. Maggie's favorite Hanson brother. Mine's Zach. Poor Isaac. Nobody loves Isaac. You know, there's someone. Uh, this Brian is a, Zach. This is, oh, Zach! That's my favorite. Little 11 year old drummer when they put out Mbop. I mean, and Zach has an option on your question. Yeah, oh, well, those are, yeah, it's okay. Uh, question two What alcoholic spirit is used in a pina colada cocktail? Rum is the correct answer. And what better question to cheers to than a question about alcohol? If this is your first time with us, it's completely optional, but every time you guys do super well, we like to cheers. We call it a social. If you're out there and you've been playing with us, we now have official Bag of Tricks social glasses. Um, so what better way to drink in style and celebrate how well you did than with a Bag of Tricks social glass? Um, cheers, guys. You did well. You know your alcohol. Stop it. Question number three. Which of the following NFL teams lost four consecutive Super Bowls. Um, this picture serves as a reminder that the gifts and the pictures that I use typically have nothing to do with the answer. Um, they're just there for fun. They're related to the question, but not the answer. Which of these NFL teams lost four consecutive Super Bowls? Was it the Buffalo Bills, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Detroit Lions, or the Atlanta Falcons? Uh, Noel St. Germain, yes. Oh, speaking of... People who have ordered glasses, we just shipped a bunch out. Uh, well, we placed a pickup. Yeah, they're going to be picked up tomorrow by USPS. And then we'll be making pretty much the rest of the glasses that have already been ordered will go out this weekend. Um, so if you have ordered a glass, you have something coming. It is going out this weekend. We didn't even get all of our supplies in until about a day or two ago. So thank you guys for your patience and thank you for your support by ordering those glasses. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these social glasses will be on the website. I'm only going to make like 20 of them. Um, so if you're interested, definitely let us know. I'll put them on the, the website here soon. Uh, I might make a few different styles. I have to make one that's a sociable for our friends in Canada, of course. Buffalo Bills is the correct answer. Good job. 65% of you knew. Buffalo Bills. Tough if you're a Bills fan to go through four in a row. All right, question four. Which of the following albums is the title of one of Madonna's? Albums. So there are four albums listed. Which of these was a Madonna album? Was it Supernatural, Ray of Light, Jagged Little Pill, or Come On Over? K 
Kevin Fluke, you've lost respect now that I know the Hanson Brothers' okay. names. That was one of the first CDs I ever bought. He's in for a surprise. He's yeah, if you actually. don't know how much I love Hanson, you are in for a surprise. <laughs> Zach was my favorite. Just some trivia, if you do like Hanson, they were, I mean, if not number one, they were at the top of the Billboard charts with an 11-year-old drummer. I just can't get over that. Um, Taylor was like 15, Isaac was 16, but Zach was drumming in a Billboard topping <laughs> single. Uh, at the age of 11. Name my guinea pig after oh, one of them. That's adorable. Which one, Lindsay? How about some pop music trivia? Lisa Kemper! Thank you for being here. Lisa and Brian, I'm sure, back there, too. Uh, those are the individuals that help us put together our West Suburban Community Pantry fundraising event tomorrow. So thank you guys for being here. I know you've been playing trivia a lot. Uh, we appreciate the heck out of you guys, and we're excited um, to have you help us help the West Suburban Community Pantry tomorrow. Let's see what you guys thought. I feel like this is going to be... okay. Uh, 68% of you, sorry Chris, we missed it, 68% of you said Ray of Light, um, that late 90s, early 2000s, uh, MTV was all over this, the music video was huge, Ray of Light was the correct answer. All right, we'll look at question five, and then we'll look at the standings, this might be my favorite gift tonight. Harlan Sanders founded which of the following restaurants? Harlan Sanders founded which of the following restaurants? Was it Pizza Hut, KFC, Long John Silver's, or Taco Bell? And Lisa Kemper, yes, I'm in for pop music trivia. We did, uh, we hosted a private event tonight, Phoebe did, and it was all 80s music trivia. That was a fun one to write. That was 45 questions. We did a 90-minute event, all 80s. Addison says hi. Hi, Addison. Uh, somebody wants to say hi to you. Taco says hi. Thanks for being here, Addison. Thanks for staying up. Uh, how are you doing in, what were you reading, Hunger Games? Right? You started Hunger Games series. How's that going? Let us know. Coleman, Coleman Slosky. Thank yes. you for that. Yes, yes Jen Sterna. <laughs> uh, again, a social. I put a bunch of easy questions in the beginning to make you feel good and to get us nice and liquored up. If you drink, you don't have to. You can cheers with whatever you'd like. Food, drink, anything. This is just us celebrating how well you guys do. So don't mix it up. Cheers, guys. Congrats. KFC, Colonel Sanders. So for the first time, we're going to look at the standings. This will show the top three individuals on the screen the entire time. Everybody else is going to rotate through. So if you're here and you're playing, your team name will be up there. Just watch for it. I'll let this go through so you can see. First, second, and third place, we have Master Baker in first, Team Cream in second, and Always Be Flagging in third. Everybody else is going to rotate through. I'm going to throw it on the taco can so you guys can enjoy his little curled up self. And I'm going to look at these comments. Um, she's on page 85 and says, hi, Taco. Awesome. Richard Washam. Taco has had all his shots. He just went to the incredible Partners and in Paws in Lyle, yeah. our favorite place in the world. We literally just got him uh, in there a couple weeks ago. 80s music trivia. Misha, we'll probably do an 80s trivia coming up soon. We've talked about that, Gina and I. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. A... We definitely have a, an 80s trivia coming up. Sociable in Brantford. Where's Brantford, Brad? Nice. We will definitely do an 80s trivia. It might not be all 80s music that we do for a public event. They specifically said 80s music for our private event. Um, but we will definitely do a 80s pop culture trivia. So TV, movies, and music will be something that we do. I really enjoy hosting that one. Uh, Ontario, outside of Toronto, about an hour-ish. Yeah, is it sociable there? I don't know. An hour west and south. All right, here we go. We're moving on. Question number six will be on your screen as soon as it loads. Oh, this is my second favorite gift. Which musician listed below released a single titled Thinking Out Loud in 2014? Which musician released Thinking Out Loud in 2014? Was it Bruno Mars, Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, or Ed Sheeran? Misha, yes! Watching John Hughes since we did John Hughes trivia. That's a good set of movies to watch through. We've been pouring through Golden Girls. Get ready for Golden Girls trivia. 
SpongeBob, I'm pretty well versed on. We're good for that. All right, let's see what you guys thought. Yeah, yeah. Not many of you struggled. A couple of you thought it was Taylor. A few thought Bruno and Justin, but the correct answer was Ed Sheeran. It seems like you either love him or hate him. Uh, not a lot of people out there that are lukewarm on Ed Sheeran. I really like him. I enjoy him. I think he's a great musician. He was good in that movie yesterday. Remember that? Mm -hmm. That's on HBO now. Uh, if you guys haven't watched it yesterday, that's a good movie. If the Beatles didn't exist. All right, question seven. Little Geography, the Sahara Desert is part of which continent? And yes, that is a dog dressed up as a bantha uh, from Star Wars. The Sahara Desert is part of which continent? Africa, Australia, Asia, or South America? Uh, saw Ed Sheeran at Soldier Field a year and a half ago. Love him. Yes. Lukewarm. Okay, we have a lukewarm moment. Uh, Sarah Valanti, I am lukewarm coming around. That's fair. If you watch, if you haven't, uh, when he plays live, he does a lot of looping. Um, you know, he doesn't do a lot of big band stuff. So if you haven't watched any of that, that may, may warm you up on him even more. Um, I think it's, he's really talented in that area. Obviously, his voice is great. Guitar skills are great. But his looping, when he, when he layers over and over, um, it's really good stuff to watch. I would check it out if you haven't. We should post that in the community later. You could remind me. Mm -hmm. This is a social. I thought you guys would do well, but you did even better than I thought. 96% of you knew that the Sahara Desert is in Africa. Africa. Cheers. Congrats. Well done. Uh, question eight. What meat... What meat is traditionally part of the dish? Eggs Benedict. So if you order an Eggs Benedict traditionally at a diner, what meat is going to be served as a part of it? Is it beef, pastrami, turkey, or ham? What meat is traditionally served as part of Eggs Benedict? Lindsay, there's no overuse of amazing. Yeah. That's why amazing's out there. You can use it as much as you want. Jeff D, you bless, you bless the reins there. Uh, Allstate was amazing. Looping was amazing. Good. Lindsay, I'm glad I was on point. I do love him. There's a silly conspiracy theory that yesterday is about him. <laughs> but it was a good movie. Lisa, I want to hear more about that conspiracy theory, if you could please let me know. Send me a message. I, I would love to hear about that. Uh I think Christiane has won the comments this evening. Point for her, yeah. Uh, yeah, That's point for Christiane. So of the choices on the screen, um, the most correct answer here would be ham. But technically, as Christiane, our neighbor to the north in Saskatchewan, has said uh, it would also be called Canadian bacon. Uh, so if you order Eggs Benedict, you would get Canadian bacon uh, here in the States. We do also call it Canadian bacon, but a lot of people would also just call it ham. So good job. That's another social. You guys have made my whiskey disappear. That's all because guys, of you. Send help. Send help. Ah, you know, where are we going? <laughs> Question number nine. Okay, think about this one for a second. Don't click too quickly. Who wrote and originally performed the hit single, I Will Always Love You? Who wrote and originally performed, who originally wrote and performed the hit single, I Will Always Love You. Was it James Taylor, Dolly Parton, Chase, Tracy Chapman, or Whitney Houston? Yeah, Christiane, you're right. If I had put ham and Canadian bacon up there, that would have been tough. Uh, but ham, uh, of the choices I had, was the most right. Back bacon in Canada. Love it, love it, love it. I like my without John J. Yes, that's what I was thinking of. I knew there was a popular performance where he looped. Um, he did Shape of You at the Grammys, and it was just him, and he looped it, and it was really good. Uh, I love when I know the answer before the choices come up. It's rare. <laughs> Danielle, we believe in you. All right, let's see what you thought. Okay, okay. So not too many of you fell for the more popular answer of Whitney Houston, obviously. Um, her singing this song led to the soundtrack of The Bodyguard being the best-selling soundtrack of all time. If you can name another song from The Bodyguard soundtrack, congratulations. I bet 90% of people cannot. Um, yet it is the highest-selling soundtrack of all time because of this song. Um, but Before we needed to buy the whole album. Yeah, you had to buy the whole album to get the song. Dolly Parton originally wrote and performed it. 
Um, and it's a good version. It's certainly not Whitney. Whitney made it her own. Um, but, you know, by no means is Dolly Parton's bad. Um, I enjoy it. Uh, we'll do one more question, then we'll look at the standings. Question 10, another one of my favorite gifts tonight. Which American musician, singer, and songwriter founded To The Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences, which is dedicated to uncovering the truth about UFOs? This has been in the news recently because of the videos that were released by our government. So which American musician, singer, and songwriter founded To The Stars Academy? Is it Tom DeLonge, Tom Morello, Mark Hoppus, or Rivers Cuomo? Elf trivia. Jenny, if, um, you know, I hope we're not, but if we are still here, we're going to do, we're going to do some type of Christmas trivia in a future date. <laughs> what? Maybe be struck down. If we're in quarantine in December, I don't know. Oh, I'm not even thinking December. I was thinking Christmas in July. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. If Ooh. we're, if we're still doing this in July, we'll do a Christmas in July. Uh, 90s TV trivia is going to happen. Gilmore Girls trivia is going to happen. No, that was good. Uh, Elf trivia is fun. Christmas in July trivia. We're going to do a horror movie trivia. Um, if for nobody else, for David Rodriguez, um, my good friend out there who loves it and has asked for it, um, we will do a horror horror movie trivia. Let me enunciate for y'all. Um, 73 of you said Tom DeLong. 35 of you said Tom Morello. 13 said Mark Hoppus. 11 said Rivers. Uh, Rivers from Weezer. Tom Morello from Rage Against the Machine. Mark and Tom both from Blink-182 originally. Uh, Tom left Blink-182, went on to do many things, uh, but first on his plate now is running To The Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences. If you follow him on Twitter, it is a roller coaster. Um, he feeling, he's feeling very vindicated this week after the government released three videos saying, hey, listen, there are UFOs. Uh, it gives you an idea of the, the times that we're living in that literally the U.S. government said, hey, guys, we're not saying these are aliens, but we don't know what they are. And it barely made the news. It barely made the news. All right, here we go. Let's look at the standings. We're 10 questions in. Currently, Master Baker's still in first, but now Always Be Flagging is up into second. Team Cream in third. I saw Emily in fourth. Uh, Jacqueline in 15th. Turd Ferguson in 14th. The Drinking Mormon. Sounds like an oxymoron to me. The Spicy Meat the Balls up there. Cats are jerks. How dare you? They are, but how dare you? Dunder Mifflin B Team. Dream Team. Dead inside. <laughs> May I see your manager? Is That's uh, Tommy, right? In 44th. Bree and Jeremy, the Johnsons, Angie McIntyre, Jen Widener, I see you out there. The low-cal calzone zone, Quizards of Waverly Place out there. Please don't spoil Parks and Rec. We love. Pack and Hammered. Yeah, uh, don't be that person. We haven't watched the Parks and Rec episode because we've been here doing this. Um, I've been hosting since 7 o'clock, so please don't make me regret it by spoiling anything about Parks and Rec in the comments. There's two yeah. turd Fergusons? <laughs> you are people. Uh, it is social time. Sarah, cheers. Thanks for being here. Jenny Rambo. Here real quickly. Uh, here's the social again. Like I said, I'm going to make some of these. I, I just personally don't want to make too many. I want to keep it kind of limited um, to those of you who will really appreciate. And cheers with me with a social glass. Both turds doing so well, floating among the top, if you will. All right, here we go. Question 11. It's time for the question 11 drink. This one always takes a second to load, so, you know, let's use that time to drink. This beer is delicious. Which one? Summer vacation? Yeah. Oh, I know. Like I said, what better name for a beer during lockdown? All right, another one of my favorite gifts. I love all my gifts tonight. Question 11. Which celebrity chef is the host of diners, drive-ins, and dives. Which celebrity chef is the host of Diners, Drive-Ins, and Dives? Is it Emeril Lagasse, Alton Brown, Bobby Flay, or Guy Fieri? <laughs> Julie E. is in a turd sandwich. <laughs> That's not a place. Did you ever think you would be there? Did you ever think you would be in a turd sandwich? The Swedish chef is your favorite Muppet. Misha, that's a good favorite Muppet. Um, ooh. Who's my favorite Muppet? Ooh. Oh, jeez. I may have to go Beaker. Oh, my gosh. That's so you. That is very me. What's the mouse's yes, name uh, who is much bigger in the Christmas Carol? 
Rizzo the Rat. Rizzo the Rat. I also like Rizzo the Rat. What is your guys' favorite Muppet? Let us know in the comments. What is your favorite Muppet? Animal. Animal's a good one. I do like to drum. Oh, look at this social. Guy Fieri. Sorry if I'm yelling, but I'm yelling. Here's where we are. Uh, cheers, guys. 97% of you, Guy Fieri. Um, I don't like all the hate that he gets. I like Guy Fieri. Um, he's, a, he's a good host. And a good guy. Uh, when the wildfires were going on in California, he set up shop and just cooked food for all of the firefighters out there, uh, obviously free of charge. He was just doing this. Um, I, I get that people don't like his personality or don't like how he talks or whatever, but overall, just a, I like him. Can't say a bad thing about the guy. I think he's a good host. He won the first season. I believe it was the first season of um, Next Food Network Star, uh, so he earned where he is right now. But anyway, I'll get off my soapbox. Question 12. A little geography. Yeah. Some Animaniacs gift for you. Which of the countries listed below does not share a land border with Mexico? There are four options. One of them is correct. Which of these countries does not share a land border with Mexico? Is it Guatemala, the United States, Belize, or Honduras? Are we doing border? Oh, God damn it. Why did I do a borders question? If this is somehow wrong, I quit. Uh, if I mispronounce Guy Fieri's... Uh, Chris, how do Fieri. I say... Fieri? Is it Fieri? Guy Fieri? Guy Fieri? Illinois and Michigan share a water border. <laughs> Lindsay Davis. I love that we have an inside joke like this. What does that say about everybody? I love it. Yes to water borders. No. I... Okay. So give me all the crap you want, but can we appreciate that I wrote what country does not share a land border with Mexico? I didn't just say a border because I knew that you guys would have torn me apart. Which country does not share a land border with Mexico? Some of you said Guatemala. 50 of you said Honduras. 61 of you said Belize. The correct answer Honduras! Honduras! A little further down there in central Mexico, I believe. Um, I'd have to have uh, my Animaniac friend animate it for me. But Honduras the correct answer. We're on question 12, so we'll move on to question 13. I think this one's pretty easy <laughs> for 13, but you're still going to earn 250 Ooh. points, depending on how quickly you answer. Yes. I love that. I'll be completely honest with you guys. I ask questions about 1999 often because every time I do, I use this gift. And Prince is one of my favorite artists yeah. of all time. Uh, in 1999, who released the single Live in La Vida Loca? Was it Carlos Santana, Ricky Martin, Jennifer Lopez, or Mark Anthony? Did you see Christian? Um, I did not. G-Y-E uh, is pronounced Guy in Canada because that's how it is in French. Ooh. So like Guy I'm not saying his name is pronounced that way, but here it is. Guy is French and likely to pronounce Guy, so Guy Fieri. I like it, Christian. I can't. I love learning things. If you hadn't guessed by the guy who owns an entertainment trivia company, yeah. I love learning things, especially when you guys offer up information so nicely. Um, sometimes people aren't so nice about it. You guys are fantastic. Ooh. Purple Rain was the first R-rated movie I saw in theater. That's a, a little movie. Yeah. The first star Apollonia. Yeah. Middleton, guys, charity has uh, raised over $20 million for restaurant workers. Thank That's you. Amazing. Yes. Whether you like him or you hate him, he is doing good things. Yeah. Um, and you guys are doing good things because we get to drink again. Ricky Martin is the correct answer. Uh, congrats. Cheers, oh everybody. God, every question. Social, sociable. We're just drinking all night. Amy, the best high school grad year is 1999. I would argue 2005. Uh, Brad Sills are my first VHS movie purchase. What's a VHS? Oh, I don't know. What? What's a what? Yes, Lindsay, this is a very thirsty Thursday. It's correct. It is. Look, I just poured this beer. I'm gonna need another beer. Um, all right, here we go. Question 14. The teriyaki cooking technique comes from which of these countries? The teriyaki cooking technique originates in which country? Is it Thailand, Japan, South Korea, or China? Noelle St. Germain, you're all so young. Oh, you know, aren't we all young relatively? Being young is a gift, and it should not be uh, used improperly. 
Yeah. <laughs> Boom, roasted. <Yes>, <laughs> Boom, roasted. Oh, you failed baby. art school. Boom, roasted. Oh. Uh, my dad had Betamax. Ali just wanted to sh see how many socials he could get in one game. Danielle, you joke, but honestly, I might just do that one day. Like, hey, guys, uh, this is going to be 30 multiple choice questions. Uh, and just a heads up, the answer is B for every one of them. Let's go. Let's have fun. Uh, all right. You guys did very well here. Some of you probably thought this was a trick question, I think. Um, but the correct answer was Japan. Uh, teriyaki cooking style comes from Japan. Uh, a lot of us associate it with teriyaki sauce, um, but it is a style of cooking. So shout out to the 110 of you that knew this one. We have 130 people playing general knowledge trivia, uh, and just having a good time here on a Thursday night. So we didn't social here, but I'm going to social because I love you guys, and I'm so glad that we could be doing this together despite all the crazy shit going on. So thank you for being here. Thank you for making this a job worth doing. All right, we have two more multiple choice questions. Question number 15. Um is maybe coming up come on computer there we go which artist painted famous starry night who painted the starry night was it claude monet vincent van gogh pablo picasso or salvador dali who painted starry night look at these comments I'm down for the sociables. Yes, Christiane. My whole life is a sociable lately. Bobby, yes. Yeah, ours Thank too. you for thanking me, Misha. I appreciate you. Ooh. Art questions. Jen Sterna, just because you said that, I'm going to do an art round. <gasps> Not tonight. I don't have it prepared. I know, but soon. Uh, but you're, you regularly play with us. So thank, thank you for you. that response. And uh, we're about to do a mini a mini trivia round, which a lot of you will understand. I'll explain for everybody else. Um, and just because you said that, Jennifer Sterna, I will do a mini art round here in the next few days. Uh, you know, I like the feedback. So here we go. Let's see what you thought. Uh-oh, got a drink again. Vincent Van Gogh. Vincent Van Gogh did Starry Night. Cheers. Congrats. What was the film? Was it titled Vincent that you saw? Where, the one that was animated? Yeah, it was animated, but it was all painting. Yeah, it was beautiful. It's some kind of record because every frame of the film is a different painting. Gorgeous. Uh, yeah, if you haven't watched it, definitely check out Vincent. All right. Uh, Settle down, Rembrandt. <laughs> Settle down, <laughs> Rembrandt. <laughs> Uh-oh, uh -oh, I got a okay. drink again. <laughs> this is a fun night. You guys are fun. <laughs> um, all right, we have one more multiple choice question. So I'm going to go to 16, and then we'll look at the standings after that before we move on to the rest of these. Question 16. You have multiple choice answers coming up. In 2003, which of the following films won all 11 of the awards that it was nominated for? Was it Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, The Matrix, Reloaded, Pirates of the Caribbean, or Caribbean, and Finding Nemo? Oh, gosh. What's a VSCO girl? It's like a very specific aesthetic of girl. I feel like I've asked you this before. You Oh, we should make gifts of taco. Cassie, where have you been our whole life? That's a great idea. Yeah, we can do that. He's going to be in some uh, fun videos coming up. We'll make uh, some gifts. So, Visco girls in the 90s wore like Adidas lip gloss and like very intense Captain Patty works and then... Ooh, somebody just called me out, and you are right. Wide leg jeans and... Um, so I'm assuming... Yeah, you guys didn't struggle with this, but uh, I this is a question I could have been more specific on. I was talking about Academy Awards, as in Oscars, um, but this is an example of me writing a question and not being specific enough. Um, it's not going to really change, because, again, you guys answered very well. And none of the other answers fit the bill, so don't argue with me, because um, only one out here won 11 awards of any kind. Um, but you are right. Uh, it is not Dundee's. We were talking about Oscars, and 82% of you correctly said Return of the Kings. Return of the King. Um, it is one of only a few films to do it. Titanic did it. 
Uh, Lord of the Rings, Return of the King did it. It won, 11, I think Ben Hur won 11. Um, it's the most Academy Awards or Oscars that one film has ever won. So thank you. Please don't think I'm, I'm being rude. I am admitting that could have been worded better. But The Matrix, the Pirates, and Finding Nemo, none of those won 11 awards of any type. Um, I can almost assure you in any one category. So that's the end of multiple choice questions. We are going to do 15 more questions. They're going to be a little bit different. But before we do that, we're going to see the ranking. So I'm going to put them up on the screen currently. In first place is now always be flag and Rich H in second. You're what sneezes are in third. Everybody else is going to rotate through. Um, so we'll watch that. Just hang tight. We'll get into the second round here in just a second. I'm going to let this go through twice so you know exactly where you are. I see Pete C out there. I'm guessing Pete Chenderly. Thank you for being here. I see the spicy meat the balls. Uh, Stay puff marshmallow man. Every time I see that, I want to watch Ghostbusters. Tommy Widener there in 38th. Jen Widener in 47th. Tequila Mockingbird there. Wait, spicy meat squares? I don't know what that is. Uh, I'm here for Cheedy. We do need to do a good place trivia. Uh, cats are jerks. The wolf Wolverines. Teddy Bear Suicide in 64th. Maggie and Brian, thank you both so much for being here. We appreciate your support more than you know. Uh, Alvin Sakura, my man out there. Thank you for being back. One of our most regular trivia players. I see the Windsor crew. We're still in our pajamas. Ashley and Andrea, Lil Sebastian, EBC Dolans. EBC as in Elmhurst Brewing Company. Uh, almost Masters. A poo poo and a pee pee is here. A poo poo and a pee pee. Uh, listen, all of your team names are fantastic. Uh, but <laughs> if you appeal to the lowest common denominator and your team name is a poo poo and a pee pee, you're going to win my heart every single time. All right, here we go. We're moving on now. So how this works, the rest of the game, you are no longer going to have multiple choice answers. If this is your first time playing, this is very important to know. You will no longer have multiple choice answers. You actually have to type your answers in. So just by that virtue, it is going to be tougher because you have to come up with the answer all on your own. Because of that, I'm going to increase the point value we're going to increase basically 50 points every five questions. So a lot of points still up for grabs. Uh, if you're not in first, second, third place, don't worry. This is still anybody's game to win. I can promise you that. There are a couple things that are going to change. Like I said, first and foremost, no more multiple choice questions. But secondly, the timer is still 30 seconds, but the points no longer decrease based on how long it takes you to answer. So if it takes you two seconds or if it takes you 26 seconds, you earn the same amount of points. You earn the full value of the question. The reason I change that for you is because I want you to please, please take your time and spell your answers correct, uh, correctly. If you spell the answer correctly, the computer is going to automatically mark you correct. It's going to give you points, and we'll be good to go. If you spell it wrong, I have to go through and manually correct it for you. So usually I'm, I'm good about that. I can do it. But if I miss it, then you won't get points. Um, so that's my warning to you. If you spell it right, you're going to get points. If you spell it wrong, you'll probably get points. That's the best way I can put it. Um, you still have 30 seconds, but make sure you're watching the timer on your phone or your computer, not on the YouTube stream because that's always a couple seconds behind. Uh, if you get your answer in, I mark it correct, you'll earn points. It's spicy meat the squares. 
Spicy meet the squares <laughs> and spicy meet the balls. I like it. Different, different it's shapes. It's Abigail's boyfriend. So she's the spicy meet the balls. He's and the spicy, spicy meet, meet the, the squares. squares. I love it. I love you guys. All right. So here we go. The next five questions. You heard me referencing this earlier. The next five questions are our mini trivia themed round. All that means is that the next five questions all come from the same theme. It's basically the same question, but with different subjects. And what I mean by that is this is a visual round. I, I really hope that Kim and Dave Guizdal are out there because I'm doing this round because you mentioned it the other day. And if you're not, that's okay. Um, but this round is about famous books. This is a picture round. The next five questions, we'll do one at a time, but the next five questions, I'm going to show you a famous book cover with the title removed. You just have to tell me the name of the book. That's it. I'm going to show you the, the cover of a book, and you just have to tell me the name of the book. It's that simple. That doesn't mean that they're easy, but some of these might be easy. They're all simple. It's a simple concept. I show you the cover. It'll be on your screen. You type in the name of the book. Boom, bada bing, you're done. If you're right, you're in the points. If you're wrong, you don't. Make sure you spell it right if you can because that makes sure you get the points. Here we go. Cheers, guys. <coughs> Thanks for being here. Let's do this mini round. Thank you for being there. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being there. Thank you for loving me. All right. Question 17, our first picture question. Name this famous book by its cover. What is the name of this famous book? Oh, I know some of you are going to get yeah. this right. Some of these are new. Some of these are old. If you were playing Parks and Rec with us last well, night. This round is, oh, I love it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I did it myself. <laughs> Brian Brooks. Books. Check them out. I got it. I can Hope be taught. Hope covers. one is the Bible. Not tonight. I mean, There's there have so many Too many covers. different covers of the Bible. Immediately forgets every yeah, book that I've read. Real. That is me trying to play triv uh, <laughs> Jeopardy. Sarah Volante, I am embarrassed. Uh, while I have you, Volante. Is it Volante or Volant? Uh, people tend to correct me on their last names. I like to you know, mention you guys on the stream. So let me know if I'm saying it wrong. Volante or Volant? All right. So let's take a look at what you guys thought the answer was. Overall, you did very very good. Uh, so on my end, I see all of your answers, and if they're spelled wrong, I have to correct it. So bear with me here. I'll put them up on the screen. A lot of you said Twilight. A few people said Fifty Shades of Grey. I see Snow White. Um, Eclipse Myers. That's uh, It is Stephanie Myers, but Eclipse is a different book. Fifty Shades of Grey again, East of Eden. The correct answer here is Twilight. Twilight. I will admit I've read them all, and I still hold this thought if you took all of the books three books right three books four movies if you took all the books and just condensed them into one book it would have been fantastic um it could have been fantastic i'm not saying it would have been uh, but there was just a lot of what i consider filler and i know some people consider that you know great stuff um, but all three books definitely could have been one very exciting book all right here we go this Thank coming you. From a Stephen King fan who love loves it. character development. You've seen Magic Mike a bunch of times. I've never seen it. You've read all of Twilight. I've never read it. Listen, you know I like to love be you. like to be well rounded. I, I love you too. All right, you guys did well. That was Twilight. Here we go. Same category, different book. Name this famous book by its cover. What is the name of this book? <laughs> book two with my doorstop. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, Jeff D. Oh, this is a book. We miss you at York. Look at all these friends who I don't even know are friends. Lindsay Davis, I love teaching this book. So here's an admission. I haven't read this book start to finish. I've, I've read excerpts and, and parts. I haven't even seen the movie that's out there. I My wife wants Twilight Tribune. She would love teaching this because there's so much symbolism. Yeah. Get out of here. I own it. You can just go to the shelf right there. Four books, five movies. Thank you, Jen. All right. Let's see what you guys thought. Again, I have to take a second. You guys did very well. I don't want to get a you know jump the gun, but compared to most nights, you guys are doing a very good job at spelling well. Um, 
Let's see what you thought. A lot of you said The Great Gatsby, and a lot of you are correct. I Am Ugly was a guess. Uh, Streetcar Named Desire, Screw Me, Gone Girl, Seinfeld, Bible. Uh, none of those correct. Great Gatsby. All right, question 19. Some of these old, some of these new. This is a newer one. Uh, so somebody just mentioned... If you're on your phone, don't let autocorrect duck you up. I like to say that. Make sure that you take your time. You have all 30 seconds now. Um, you don't have to rush to get these answers in. Type it. Make sure it's right. And then send it in. What is the name of this book? Addison's in bed. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. It's 10 o'clock. Uh, I'm excited. I would like to do... Some Hunger Games stuff when she finishes that. And then whenever she finishes the rest of Harry Potter, I know it's going to be a little while. I did see uh, Maggie and Brian that she got a phone, so who knows if she'll ever read again. <laughs> Aww. Private literal arts English lit major Lindsay Davis. Uh, Jennifer Cerna, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I take a lot of time to make this. Um, all of these questions, all of these rounds. So obviously... If you guys, if you guys are really mean about it, I try to just let that roll off. But when you're very nice about it, I do take that to heart. So I appreciate it. By then we'll be back in bars for Harry Potter, <laughs> Brian. But as long as by then Addison's not old enough to go to the bars for Harry Potter, as long as she finishes before then. All right, uh, this one you guys spelled twenty-five different ways. So give me one second. Yeah. Lots of English lit majors. A lot of English majors out there. I was a dietetics major. I was more into the sciences. How about some picture books? How about some picture books? I feel like everybody poops. And <laughs> uh, what's the other one? Moon. Go the fuck to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> um, this one I'm a little specific on, so I'm not marking everything correct here. I never read the, this book. I just saw. I had it on my Kindle. Uh, the correct answer here is. Life of Pi. So if you wrote anything close to Life of Pi, um, if this is your first time playing on your phone, excuse me, on your phone, it may tell you that you got it wrong because it doesn't always update at the same time that we do. But as long as you wrote something close to Life of Pi, you did get points for this. Don't worry. <laughs> the uh, Tiger King references. Yeah, a lot of Tiger, Tiger King references. Uh, Crouching <laughs> Tiger, Hidden Dragon. You see Joe Exotic, that bitch Carol Baskin. Carol Baskins did it. Yes. So far, you've seen all of these movies, Chris. <laughs> Have you read the books, though? Uh, you're halfway there, I guess. Uh, name this famous book by its cover. What is the name of this book? Yeah, we have we have most of these on our bookshelf. Actually, I think we have all of these because I had Twilight, and you I had I had Life of Pi. And, I have and you one. have and Great Gatsby, Gatsby, and you have this one. Oh, that's cute. The only, and I, we both had the next one, which is yeah. adorable. Oh, my God. How cute. This book, when I was in high school, I mean, obviously, it didn't come out when I was in high school, but this is what I ever think. All right, everybody's in. Once again, you guys did a very good job of spelling this correctly, but a few of you did spell it wrong, so give me one second while I look through these. I'll throw it up on the screen. For those of you that are playing for the first time, this is what I see. Um, I see a whole bunch of different answers come through. And if something's close, I always say, you know, if we were in the bars, if we were playing live you know, at a restaurant, I'd be doing the same thing, but you wouldn't be watching me do it. Um, I always make a judgment call based on how close your answer is to the correct answer. Uh, I'm going to give this one because that sounds like somebody who's just drinking with me. <laughs> All right. Correct Great answer. Guesses, Catcher in the rye. Catcher in the rye is the correct mm -hmm. answer. Good job. 56% of you still. So still over half of you are getting these correct. And I think that this is overall a pretty tough round. Um, um, I like these themed rounds. If you don't like them, sorry, they're not going away. We do just one round of five themed questions every time we do general knowledge. They're not always books. Um, last time we did famous guitarists. Sometimes we do famous movie quotes. 
Sometimes we do history, science. It always switches. But I like these themed rounds because you can get in a nice little rhythm here for five questions. Did you mark Desiree's correct, the catcher in the rye? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. If you put anything close to catcher in the rye, the catcher in the rye, uh, you got points. Don't you worry. All right, here we go. Final one of these. This is question 21, so that's a drinking question. Cheers, everybody. Social! Uh, anytime the computer has to work hard, we drink in its honor. This is a graphic novel, so if you will. Um, it's a book, but it is a graphic novel. What is the name of this famous graphic novel? What did Jeff say? I have some catcher, catcher in the, the rye, rye whiskey. whiskey. Love it. Oh, we have this on our shelf too. That's why I said we both have this. Oh. We both owned this one. This I borrowed from an ex-boyfriend and still own. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, I know it sometimes doesn't show correct over the last time it did, so I'm not sure. Yeah, Desiree, the, the system's crazy when it comes to misspelled answers. Um, as long as you're close, I always do give points. Love the theme rounds. Thank you, Noelle. Uh, Jen Cerna, Desiree, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you as thank I you, mentioned before, and I know one person did, if you have ideas for theme rounds like this, yeah. email me. I did not mention that, so that's good. Uh, before I announce the, the correct answer here, if you have ideas for themed rounds, so again, they're just five questions. It's got to be something that, you know, even though it's going to be tough for some people, uh, a majority of people can at least approach. Um, if you have ideas for rounds like what we're doing right now, please do send us messages or email Gina, Gina at bagoftricks.com um, and let her know what you would like to see. I do absolutely take those into account. Uh, and more than that, I really appreciate it because I'm only so much of a creative person. So the more ideas that you guys come up with, I can, I can fashion and turn into rounds. Um, you know, I, I do appreciate at least the starting point, the jumping off point. All right, so this one, was a graphic novel it was then a movie and it was then an hbo series which has been very well reviewed watchmen watchmen the correct answer here good job everybody let's look at the standings we're gonna look at the standings here then we'll look at them again in five questions and then we'll finish it out uh always be flagging up in first number two you're what sneezes are and then smells good more like in third I see the spicy meet the balls in 13th. Stay puff marshmallow man there in 16th. If you can see this, it's social time, I called it. So we're going to drink. Cheers, everybody. Last dance trivia. Ooh. Last dance trivia. Misha, I could get behind that. Maybe after the final episode, we could do like a, a 90s Bulls last dance trivia. Brian Rudder said it too. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, if I don't mention your idea, that doesn't mean I don't like it. I just, I can't read everything. Julie, Ali, I cannot spell. That's okay, Julie. Are you having fun? As long as you're having fun, you're winning. Desiree, I'll look into it. Uh, if that's continuing to happen, make sure, do me a favor, close your internet browser, open it back up, refresh your page, and log back in. I've, uh... I've changed the setting here so that you can log back in with the same name. Um, so even if you log out and you log back in, your uh, your points will continue to accumulate. Um, unfortunately for everybody, so obviously we're seeing with Desiree's situation here, um, sometimes be just because of the fact that we have to do this on the internet, things can happen where uh, the internet gets caught up and maybe your answers be aren't being sent in. Uh, the best way I can put it is if we get to a point where it seems like everybody is having an issue, if nobody's answers are coming in, then I'll restart my computer. We'll go from there. But if it seems like everybody else is working, but your answers aren't going in, restart your browser, restart your phone, your computer, whatever. I know it's going to take a question or two, um, but do that just to kind of to, to refresh your connection. I'm so sorry when that happens. I wish that I could stop it from happening. I swear I do. Um, but that is that is um, what we're dealing with here with the internet. I'm so sorry. Uh, Chris can confirm. Julie's having fun. Hey, Rocky. Thank you, Sarah, for liking that setting. 
I didn't do much. I just clicked the button, but I'm glad you like it. All right, here we go. Question 22. We are now back to regular trivia, but they are worth more and more, and you have to type in the answer. So just like the previous five questions, but no longer part of one theme, here is question 22. According to the original, officially, Monopoly rules. How much money will you receive if you land on the go space? You can only answer with numbers. Don't try typing words. How much money do you receive for landing on go in Monopoly, according to the official traditional rules? House rules be damned. You want to play Monopoly later? Mm -hmm. Yes. No, but I'll play Scrabble. She said no, but she'll play Scrabble. Hey, Monopoly will be up all night. That's fine. All right, we'll play Scrabble. Any other board game enthusiasts out there? I'd love to get some virtual board games going. Puerto Rico? Anybody play Puerto Rico? We can play Puerto Rico online together for free. Let me know. I would love to find some Puerto Rico friends. Uh, so this was easy. Not easy for everybody, but it was easy for me because you guys guessed only a couple different things. The correct answer, according to the official rules, you receive the same amount. $200 if you land on go. When I play with our house rules, you get $400 if you land on go. That's one of the reasons the game takes longer. You're not supposed to add rules like that. Um, but according to the official traditional rules, if you land on go, you only get the 200 that you would get if you passed go. So good job. Over half of you still, 64 people knew it. Love board games. Like clue. Ooh, I could go for some clue. I would play clue and also watch the movie large. How are you guys playing board games online? Let me know. Uh, Mr. Rice Krispy, no, you do not. You get your 200 for landing on go, and then that's it. I got a stimulus check for landing on go. Must be nice. Must be nice. I, I haven't seen one of those yet. All right, here we go. <laughs> Question 23. You have a one in eight shot. Sorry, Pluto. Which planet in our solar system is closest to the sun? Which planet in our solar system is closest to the sun? You have to type it in. You have 30 seconds. Whoa. Kevin's playing Monopoly with real money before. Like $1,500 starting for each person, Kevin? And Christian says Hasbro's on PS4. Ooh, I have, um, I have Monopoly on... I do have Monopoly on PS4. No, I have it on the Switch. But you have um, Ticket to Ride. I have Ticket to Ride on the Xbox, uh, Xbox One. And I have, uh, it reminds me of Central Park. I know, I have uh, Monopoly on the Switch, and I have a bunch of Jackbox games. Would you guys play some Jackbox games if we, we set that up somehow? I think that'd be fun. That'd be something Ooh. different to do. We could be a little more interactive. We can just drink and play some crazy ass games together. It'd be a lot less people, but uh, we could set it up ahead of time. Let us know in the comments. Uh, let's see what you thought. Officially. Yeah. Pluto is a dwarf planet as of today. I just looked up. Um, so you guys did not need help here. 66% of you. Mercury, congrats. Cheers. All right, question 24. This is my maybe my other favorite gift of the night. If you ask for ahi, A-H-I, ahi, at a sushi, re sushi restaurant, what type of fish are you ordering? If you ask for ahi, at a sushi restaurant, what type of fish are you ordering? Uh, Jackbox is awesome. Yes, Jacqueline on house party. Jenny still included Pluto. Uh, Misha. Okay, so if you guys haven't joined yet, uh, Gina created a group on Facebook called the Bag of Tricks Online Community. So we have a Bag of Tricks online community. What it is, and the reason that she created it, is for us to take conversations from uh, like what we're doing right now in this YouTube chat and continue with them after the video ends. This is a great thing that I would like to talk about on the online community. If you haven't joined, you can find it. Just Oh, Gina just clicked it. Uh, she just posted it there. Um, so you can join. Look at her. Fucking amazing. Um, you can join that group. We'll post a link. Uh, you can find out what Jackbox is. And then going forward, we would love to play games with you guys. It yeah. doesn't always have to be trivia. This is the kind of game that I could actually play with you rather than just having True, to, yeah. rather than having to write all the questions and then just, you know, sit here and... Yeah, Jackbox takes, like, games that you've played before and just kind of makes them... Makes simple, them more... Yeah, yeah. Quick, fun, 
And I'm not a huge gamer, and I love and it. And you like it. Gina does not like a lot of games, but she likes Jackbox. So if you're not a gamer, you would still like this. Tuna, the correct answer. Um, big tuna, as Andy would say. Congrats. Moving on, question 25. Sorry to our friends up north. In what year was the Declaration of Independence signed in America? You may still know. Honestly, I've met plenty You're of people. Smart. Yeah, I've met plenty of people outside of America that know more about our history than Americans do. In what year was the Declaration of Independence signed in America? You can only answer with numbers. Just type in the year. Yeah, please do join the, the group. Heard of Jackbox just earlier tonight. Brad Silzer, we would love to have you on there. It's fun because you, you get to play. There's funny games. There's serious games. Um, but over, they're always fun. Trivia Murder House is fun, Noel. I agree. Canada will get the queen of their money any day now. Just joined. I love Jackbox games. I love you guys' comments. I just can't keep up. I've never played Trivia Murder House. Oh, yes, yeah, you I have. have. Yes, you have. Ooh, that's intense. That's a fun one. Uh, a lot of you said 1776, and a lot of you were correct. Uh, 1776, the Declaration of Independence. We didn't get the Constitution for quite a while after that. Uh, I don't remember the year. I'll be completely honest. 1780-something. 1784? Nine? Anybody remember? Where's our <laughs> political science majors out there? That's we have a lot, of, a lot of English majors. Yeah, Steph, do you know? All right. Good job, though. A lot of you knew this. says Rick here. Thank you, Rich. I knew that it was later. Nine years, uh, 11 years later. 1787, we got the Constitution. All right. That's question 25. So how this is going to work, I'm going to throw the rankings up one last time. Then we'll do the, the last six questions, and then we'll go over the final standings. Don't forget, please continue to be honest. Don't Google answers. Don't look anything up, because the top winner tonight does win a $25 gift card to Elmhurst Brewing Company. You can use it for beer, for food, whatever you want. They are incredible. I, I love them for sponsoring so many events with us every single week. Obviously, we were going to come on here and have fun anyway, but with them sponsoring this and, and offering up a gift card to the winner, it just makes it that much more intense. So please keep it fair. Keep it honest. Let's see where we are after question 25. Always be flagging in first. You're what sneezes are in second. Smells good more like in third. But everybody is close. You can see down to 21st place uh, is only 5,700 compared to 62. And the final questions, I believe, are worth 400 points apiece. Um, so there are still quite a few points up for grabs. Bag of Tricks Clue. I love it. It was Taco in the kitchen with the kibble. The kibble. <laughs> Uh, um, the best. Brian has seen it once. Maggie twice on Broadway. What are we talking about? Hamilton. Hamilton. I have not seen. You saw Hamilton. Um, something. Oh, Kevin said, can we do virtual murder mystery? Kevin, yes, we can. I've been looking into that because we do murder mysteries, uh, obviously, when we're not just virtual. And uh, there are some virtual murder mysteries available. It would be limited. We would do it via Zoom. You have to be able to see everybody and talk to everybody. But we could absolutely do that. Um, Danielle, can you shoot us a message to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment Facebook page? Uh, your friend who owns an amazing wine shop in the West Loop. We are always looking for more sponsors. We would love to help them get more business uh, during these times. So we go spend a lot of money on wine. Yeah, we, we buy a lot of wine. So shoot us a message. Kevin Coke, my man. Thank you for being here. I haven't seen your name all night. One of my favorite people of all time. Thank you for being here, Kevin. Allison, if you're out there too, we love you. How's the weather in Florida? I always like to know. Usually makes me sad. All right, guys, we have one, two, three, four, five, six questions left. These are the final six questions. Question six, Richard Starkey is one of the most famous musicians of all time, yet 99% of the world would only know him by what stage name? I'm looking for a first and last name. So it's a first and last name. The first and last name that Richard Starkey goes by. He's a famous musician. His real name is Richard Starkey. What is his stage name? First and last. Kevin Koch. Jen <laughs> Something Stern. happened in 1787. Sure, yes, Noel, I'm sure you're right. Something did happen. In oh, it was 1789. 
Uh, a few people said that. For shame. Listen, I trusted you guys. <laughs> 1789 is fine. I knew it was later. Let's at least... Listen, buddy, you're not the only one drinking out there. Okay? Yeah. No, that's fine. Nobody nobody is here. Kevin, don't comment in the YouTube. But congrats on... <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit, I love you, Kevin. Oh, my God. Let me know when you're coming back to Illinois. <laughs> or whenever I can go to Florida, I'm coming to Florida, man. <laughs> I miss you so much. I'm not to be so thankful for that. Yeah. We Kevin, make, us make mistakes. For those of you that are joining us for the first time, the person that I'm talking to there is one of the original originals. So he was one of my first regular trivia players um, at the cellar door in Downers Grove. Um, he's the type of individual that made me realize that this is something I wanted to do um, because I just love seeing his face every week hosting trivia. So thank you, Kevin, for continuing to do this online with me. I really appreciate it. I'm just marking a few of these correct. <laughs> Uh, an extra the correct answer is Ringo Starr. Richard Starkey is his real name, but you would know him as Ringo Starr, uh, drummer of the Beatles after Pete Best was uh, kicked to the curb. Ringo Starr. Guess what, Beatles fans? I got two Beatles questions for you in a row. Question 27, coming up right now. What city in the UK, what UK city is served by John Lennon Airport. There is an airport in the UK, Great Britain, that is called John Lennon Airport. What city would you be flying into if you arrived in John Lennon Airport? Lindsay Davis, we love you. Thank you for being here. Hasn't this night felt like extra fun? Yes, it has. This is I've really enjoyed tonight. Our favorite team. Uh, Melissa Van Dyke, you probably got points for it. Don't you worry. Um, as long as you were close, I marked it right on my end. Your phone won't always update. No, Ringo Starr would have got points. Don't you worry. Beatles trivia, yes. And yeah, again, I'm, in for, I'm in for a Beatles trivia. That is on my list. Yeah, sorry. That's one of the limits. This, uh, this platform that we use online wasn't built for online trivia, um, so we're still working with it. Yeah, don't you worry. Ringo <laughs> Starr <laughs> trivia. Every question will be, what's Ringo Starr's real name? Brad, if you win the raffle, we will do Ringo Starr. Yeah, we'll do Ringo Actually, Star. that would probably be really cool. Yeah, it'd be fun. <laughs> you disagree. Colin Hay is in the Ringo Starr All-Stars. I know. My favorite acoustic guitarist, Colin Hay, out there touring Baby with Ringo music. Starr. Well, not right now. Um, okay, 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 okay. Everybody's in. Just a couple. Oh, shoot. I could have showed you how this works. All right. I'll put them up on the screen. A lot of you knew Liverpool. Liverpool, the original home of the Beatles. Congrats, 73 of you. All right. We have just a few questions left. Let's see what you know about this one. We talked about Africa in terms of the Sahara Desert. Now we're getting more specific. I am looking for the name of a country. Which African country was known as the Gold Coast? until it gained independence and changed its name in 1957. So I'm looking for the name that it has now. What is the name of the African country who gained its independence in 1957, previously known as the Gold Coast? I'm so happy we have pizza in the fridge right now. <laughs> What are you guys eating tonight? We went. Big. Or you stop eating because it's ten. But it's ten o'clock Central Time. We don't do that. I ate before trivia, and I will eat after trivia. That was kind of like your lunch, though. Yeah, that was my lunch. We eat like weird. Yes, we do. <laughs> we have a very weird schedule, period. Because we love being here with you guys. That is the truth. I write these questions all day, and then I jump online and host it for you. Thank you guys. Again, I, I can't say this enough. Thank you guys for showing up. Um, it makes it worth it to do this, to see so many of you guys come out and play with us every night. Somebody's eating cereal. Kristen is eating cereal. Uh, Kristen, I appreciate you sending that, but I'm not going to lie. Now I want cereal, so I don't feel great about it. 
Uh, Alvin, we love you. Alvin Sakura, if you're still here, I see your answer that says, thanks, Ali and Gina from Alvin. Thank you, Alvin, for being here. Alvin is, I think, officially the, the longest tenured online trivia player since the first game we held. He has not missed one. Uh, a lot of good guesses. Cote d'Ivoire, Brazil, Uganda, Botswana, Morocco, Sudan, Chad with an exclamation point, Senegal, Ivory Coast, Nigeria. But the correct answer was Ghana. Ghana was the Gold Coast until 1957. All right, question 29. I think this one's tough. Let's see what you think. This is our second Oscars question of the night. And for those of you that pointed out earlier, this time I did remember to say Oscars, the Academy Awards. So question 29, receiving the award at the age of 76 years old in 1982. A lot of context clues here. Who was the oldest actor ever to win the Best Actor Oscar at the Academy Awards? He won it in 1982. He was 76 years old. You know this one? What's the answer? Mouth of tumors. <gasps> I run. He's the oldest to win the best supporting actor. Ooh. Oh. Yes. Yes. I Gina that. got it on her second try. And then I love his sister. But to be fair, I would not have gotten this on any try. <laughs> I love Oscars questions. If you're out there, you've been playing trivia. You know I like the periodic table of elements. I like the NATO phonetic alphabet. Someone I suggested Oscars trivia earlier. Yeah. We will probably do an Oscars trivia night overall. Um... But, uh, yeah, that, that's the one thing. Gina's guess, her original guess was Christopher Plummer. Um, and I think Christopher Plummer was the oldest to win the supporting actor. That's true. Abigail Griffin, very likely it might have been on another night. Um, I didn't have a good system for tracking these questions until about two weeks ago. Oh. Periodic table of elements. But, Ali, can you sing the Elements song? No, I cannot. Uh, and, yeah, shout out to anybody who knows that we've already seen this question and still doesn't remember. I was like, I finished that beer really quickly. Well, I still have half of it left. Oh, there's anymore. still beer in there. All right. All right. So there were a lot of different guesses. So this is taking me just one second to go through and make sure that I mark all of the correct answers correct. And again, the best way to make sure you get it correct is to write <laughs> the whole thing. Even though that one's not right. But some people have seen this, but they don't remember. Yeah. The, yeah. Didn't the remember. Correct answer is Henry. Fonda. A few of you said Peter Fonda. Henry Fonda is correct. Uh, is that Jane Fonda's brother? brother. Uncle? Cousin? Dad? Her brother. Mm -hmm. Jane Fonda is old as heck. Brother. Uh, On Golden Pond was the movie. On Golden Pond was the movie. Congratulations. All right. Two questions left. Question 30. Not about the Oscars. What TV series follows the lives of employees at the fictional Sacred Heart Teaching Hospital. What oh, TV sorry. series? I find it was her father. Oh, it was her father. What TV series follows the lives of employees at the fictional Sacred Heart Teaching Hospital? Uh, Peter her... Fonda, is her... Fonda is her brother. Peter Fonda is her brother, which a couple people guessed, uh, but Henry Fonda was yeah. the correct answer. Yeah, uh, I want the link for the Element song too. Sarah, that's me. Preposition song, true kind. True Crime Trivia, we'll probably do it again because that one was really, really popular. Hydrogen, helium, boron. Which movie? It was On Golden Pond. Uh, one of your favorite shows. Noel, this is hands down my favorite show, not one of my favorite shows. We did this trivia night already. We will most likely do it again because, honestly, I don't care how many people show up. I just like doing trivia over this show because I love it. It was pretty successful. Yeah, though. actually, a lot of people did come. Uh, the correct answer is Scrubs. Again, the gif has nothing to do with it. That's just Danny DeVito twirling around. You can get a quick glimpse at his bare butt there. Scrubs, the correct answer. Sacred Heart uh, is the, the fictional teaching hospital in Scrubs. All right. Sorry, Jacko. Oh, you just popped up when I clapped. Uh, we have one question left. One question left. This is the final question of the evening. Oh. 
I know. I'm sad too. I'm having a great time. We do. I, I will set up some Jackbox stuff, guys, because this weekend I would love to just get online and shoot the shit with y'all um, in not as such a serious way. Uh, have some fun. So we'll definitely make that happen. Again, if you're not, there, there, there's no cost to join. It, it's a completely open group. Join the Bake of Tricks online community group. That's where we can continue these conversations with you after the videos end. Once the videos end, everybody leaves. So if you're interested and you would like to do some of the stuff we talked about, or if you would like to just, you know, talk with everybody that's in the comments, that's where we're, we're trying to recommend everybody goes to is the Bake of Tricks online community Facebook group. Gina linked it in the comments earlier. I'm sure she'll send it again. So here we go. One final question. This is the one that will decide it all. What did I make as the final question today? <laughs> what happened to burrito taco? Oh, I remember this. He ran free. He escaped his burrito. Question 31. The answer to this is a country. The answer to this is a country. Paella is a popular rice dish that originated in what country? Paella. Oh, your name's not Paella. Your name's Taco. He wants Paella. I would love some Paella. Well, you got some I got some Paella. Oh, he's done the same thing. My only request for Mother's Day. Aww. Paella? I think, I don't know. You cannot. Oh, Mother's look Day. at this little schmoozer. Oh. <laughs> That's the only All right. I'm just seeing. Yeah, one person spelled it close but wrong. Oh, no, two people. Uh, so a lot of you said Spain, Brazil, Argentina, India, Germany, Philippines, España, Portugal, Kramer, <laughs> and China. The correct answer is Spain. Spain paella originated in Spain. You have those giant paella pans, uh, all sorts of seafood, rice, and delicious spices. So congratulations, everybody. Um... I can't say enough. Uh, today was a little bit, to, to be completely honest with you all, today was a tough day. It's been a long time we've been in lockdown. We're working our butts off every single day. Um, Gina's working her butt off. I'm working my butt off. And today was just a stressful, tough day. And I have had such a fucking great time here tonight. Uh, excuse my language. But it's 1030, so I'll cuss. Um, you guys made that happen. So thank you for being here. Thank you for making this worth doing. And thank you for, you know, making this a place that I enjoy being, uh, even though it is work technically, um, you guys make it completely worth it. So thank you to everybody that's here. Thank you to those of you that have donated. Um, I'm still, my watch beep buzzes and beeps throughout this event. And that just means the world to us. Um, we would do it even if nobody ever donated, but it makes it more worth it when you guys do. So thank you so much. Um, let's look at the final standings. If you are in first place, all you have to do, it's simple, send a message to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment Facebook page. Don't comment on the YouTube uh, video because we may not see it. Sometimes random stuff gets blocked, but send a message to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment page if you are in first place because you've won a $25 gift certificate or gift card to Elmhurst Brewing Company. For everybody else, before I do this, while I have a captivated audience, please don't forget, we do have fun stuff coming up. I uh, will move it here. Uh, this week, we just did Military History Trivia Night. Before this, we're doing General Knowledge Trivia right now. Tomorrow, please, if you're a fan of General Knowledge Trivia, if you had fun tonight, play more General Knowledge Trivia and help us support a great cause tomorrow at 8 o'clock. It is a long version. It's 90 minutes long from 8 to 9.30. Lisa Kemper, Brian Kemper, if you're out there, we love you and we appreciate you for setting this up. Food for Thought, an interactive virtual trivia night to benefit the West Suburban Community Pantry. They help out so many people, guys. It's incredible. So please help us help them and have some fun in the process. There are gift cards for the top individuals. All that information is on Facebook. Saturday, family friendly, 3 p.m. SpongeBob SquarePants Trivia Night. Trivia Afternoon. And then Sunday, our final event of this week is our first ever online virtual trivia brunch 
Gilmore Girls, uh, sorry, Golden Girls trivia. Uh, Rose, Blanche, Dorothy, and Sophia. All your favorite Golden Girls. We're going to be drinking mimosas, Bloody Marys, eating cheesecake, and having fun. So join us. McWeathy's Tavern sponsored that. But tonight, it is Elmer's Brewing Company who's giving a $25 gift card to the name that you see on your screen right now. In first place, always be flagging. Always be flagging just a couple hundred points ahead of Jacqueline, who is just a couple points ahead of the drinking Mormon. 21 points to be exact. Less than a question. Uh, everybody else's scores are going to rotate through. So please do watch. See where you finish. If you are team Always Be Flagging, send us a message to the Bag of Tricks Entertainment Facebook page. We will get you set up with the $25 Elmhurst Brewing gift card. But keep it on file. You won't have to watch for anything in the mail. You just get a $25 credit the next time you order anything from them. So that's it. Guys, thank you so much, uh, guys and ladies, I should say. Everyone, anybody out there. All you people. All you people. And aliens. And, and aliens. Yeah, because now aliens have been confirmed. Uh, so thank we'll you so much. Ferguson, please stand up. Please, uh, <laughs> please be nice to each other. Please help each other out. Please help us help each other out by joining us tomorrow night for that West Suburban Community Pantry um, fundraiser trivia night. We're going to have. share the link one more time. Yeah, for the uh, online community. For the event. For oh, the thank you. Community. Yeah, so Gina is sharing that link one more time. Again, if you're wondering if you should join, this is the gauntlet I'm throwing down. Our fantastic friend, Christy Ann, who lives in Saskatchewan, Canada, has purchased a ticket to play General Knowledge Trivia and support our West Suburban Chicago Trivia Pantry tomorrow night. So if you live in this area, no reason not to join us. Our friends from Canada are supporting our local uh, community pantry. So please do join us in doing that. Again, if you can't, don't feel bad. But if you can, please do join us. Other than that, guys, that's it. I'm going to throw it on Taco because he's so much more fun to look at than I am. Uh, that is it for tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you guys for making this worth doing. Um, and just honest to God, making my night. Thank you so much. Uh, we love you. We'll see you tomorrow for the event or SpongeBob on Saturday or Golden Girls Trivia Brunch. 1 o'clock on Sunday. More details and a fun video to come eventually for that uh, here soon. Thanks so much. And in case you were wondering, I'm not going to forget to tell you to wash your damn hands. <laughs>